How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to The Big Thing. It's Capes and Cows. Lots to talk about here today, man. We've got the popular choice right now for Wolverine is Taron Egerton. That's right. Comic book movie. Talking about it. We'll discuss it. Is he the right choice? Is he lined up? Do we think it'll happen? Is he going to be the next Wolverine? There's been tons of talk on this dude as Wolverine for like the last two, three, four years. Who knows? Maybe even more. Um, switching up, you go to DC, a lot of Superman talk here today where we've got tons of set photos. It looks very Donner-esque, but there's also one particular shot that looks like the Daily Planet's under attack. So what is that all about? And speaking of Superman, Chris Pratt's been rumored for stuff and people are like, oh, is he going to play Booster Gold? Well, it looks like he's going to play somebody because he was visiting James Gunn on the set of Superman, there's a picture of it. Does that mean anything partic in particular? Maybe not, but maybe so. Um, there's other things to talk about. The Boys has episode four that just hit. There's more Marvel stuff. There's more DC stuff. There's tons of it. That's what we do on this show, man. We talk about everything going on in the world in comic book movie news. So this is what the Friday show is. Thank you for joining us here today. I appreciate it. We've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. It's me, and it's Winston, and it's Coy. Hit that subscribe button, if you will. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. It's me, it's Winston, it's Coy, it's Capes and Cows. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Capes and Cows. It is myself, Christian Harloff, Winston A. Marshall, Boy, John Dro. Gentlemen, how the hell are you? <laughs> it's early, Christian. It's early. So, so I want to give a, a, a shout out to the gentlemen for the, the help that they gave me here today. This is one of the things that we're dealing with on the, uh, you know, the new schedule. I talked about it on yesterday's show. I have a, a really a great opportunity for an interview, and I'm going into the city today for a screening. But my screening is around 1 p.m., so I've got to get on the train just around like 11 o'clock. So I was like, I got to get a, uh, a show shot with the guys because I can't shoot tomorrow at like 10. Great for me. Um, <laughs> for the guys, it's like 7 a.m. So they're, it's, it's earlier for them. They're doing it here. They're troopers. And because of that, we're doing something a little different. Normally we do this in the beginning of the show, very beginning. But we're going to do this in the somewhat beginning of the show. <laughs> yeah, Winston says before we get started man i am going to do a magic mind and i said i i legitimately <laughs> said if I, I, I hold on i'm gonna go get a magic mind or i will fall asleep in the middle of the show you did and and, <laughs> so. and so for people who don't know magic mind is an absolute wonderful energy um it, it, it's there's so much energy it's clean energy uh, adaptogens all that stuff and it is so good we've been with them for a little bit and we're really excited that i mean this wasn't even going to be a thing. Winston was just like, hey, I'm going to, I got to do my magic mind. Uh, hold on. I said, well, just do it on the show. So tell people about it. And Winston, what are you, what are you digging about, uh, about magic mind? Um, I mean, it's one of those things where if you want to talk about just getting kind of instant alertness, that's they, they, whatever they have done and put into this magical little vial here this just it's clean it's clean and it's, it's just no jitters. clean and it hits yeah. and it hits in such a wonderful mellow way that you will go from i'm exhausted just oh yeah i like it because it's like not like this it's like i just feel like my my mind obviously magic mind you start thinking clearly but so if you guys head on over to magicmind.com slash big thing and you use that code big thing you will get a discount and the link is in the description you're going to see winston and coy go from zombies to the wonderful intellectual beings that they are in just a moment here intellectual <laughs> so um so there there you go Can magic you see mind. my twitter christian yeah and well yeah i know i i have but um it's so we're not we're not talking about it we won't talk about it that long but koi um isn't it it's it is you said something uh, actually something on twitter yesterday i was like look at koi look at koi he all, he all grows up <laughs> And what he said, uh, and we won't get into an acolyte discussion here, but it was just along the lines like, look, you can, you can say a thing is not good. It's possible to say things are it's bad, like bad television, and it just happens that other people who are hateful share the same opinion. It's <laughs> it, it's just it's just not good television. That's all it is. Yeah, something can be hated by people that feel about it differently and why it's not good, but you can also 
I think should be able to safely say why you think it's not good and not be lumped into that same category. 100%. And I think for years, uh, it's it's a very easy thing to assume. Uh, and like, you know, the way the internet works is very much like a headline is the entirety of a news story, right? So it's, I think it's important to read some of the text. Um, yeah. And yeah, the acolyte, uh, you know, I really want to like it. Yeah, I want, I, I know. really want to like it. I know, but it's tough. Um, and so for people wondering, oh my gosh, are, is this what the show's going to be? It, it, Coyce looking like he's in the bat cave and, and sending like tin cans or, or slapping around in the background. No, Coy has a good microphone that we're going to get him. Coy has good, uh, good lighting and Coy's actually going to be shooting from Winston's, but it was not right of me to say, A, can you do the show at 7 a.m.? And B, can you do it? Can you go over Winston's at 7 a.m.? Because Coy <laughs> at that point was... That, forget forget yeah. me. Then <laughs> right. Christian has to deal with Kristen right. and he don't want that no. smoke no, because that, he'll wake up... Yeah. And he'll be dead. Yeah. And the dude will be kidnapped. It'll just not uh, go yeah, well for yeah. anybody. Yeah, I'll wake up dead as a zombie. So, um, but it'll be. Uh, it's just not. Uh, it's it's not. The, it's not the, the show yet. But it will be. It will be. And we, we're we're excited for. It. And I and I give next shout. Next week's our pilot. Give us next give week's us our pilot. Week. Yeah. Today today's just making sure that we have a show and that we can talk about the stuff. And speaking of which, let's get into this. Let's let's start. With the Taron Egerton stuff. Here it is. Wolverine Taron Egerton is the favorite to replace Hugh Jackman as Logan at the bookies. I guess there's a uh, there's a betting site. But Taron Egerton remains a fan favorite pick to take over as Wolverine. And it seems that the Kingsman actor is also the bookies favorite to replace Hugh Jackman as the iconic mutant hero. Mark Cassidy over a comic book movie says, Hugh Jackman retired as Wolverine after James Mangle's Logan. But the actor was convinced to reprise the role with Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool and Wolverine. We don't know if Jackman will stay on as the iconic Claude Mutant after the R-rated threequel, but rumors persist he's going to return for at least one more movie, probably Secret Wars. It's always possible that the Aussie actor will stick around as the MCU's Wolverine going forward, but we're likely to see a younger actor step into the role. We're not sure if Marvel Studios has anyone in mind, but several actors have emerged as fan favorites, including Kingsman and Rocket star Taron Egerton, who also happens to be the current bookie's favorites. Here's the full list. Betting odds, sportscasting.com, which I will be visiting after this show. <laughs> um, Taryn, this is bizarre. Listen, okay, so listen to this list, and then I'm going to go over this full list. And some of these names I don't think I've ever heard as, and, and they're pretty favorite. All right, so listen to this, guys. Taryn Egerton, plus 200. Tom Hardy, plus 300. Scott Eastwood, plus 500. Henry Cavill, plus 800. Jeremy Allen White, plus 800. Charlie Hunnam plus 900, Jamie Dorman, plus 1,000, Zac Efron, plus 1,600, Daniel Radcliffe, plus 2,000. How do you not put, like, 100 bucks on Daniel Radcliffe just for the hell of it with a plus 2,000 odds? So What does that, what does that pay out? It, it would pay out 2,000 bucks. If you, so, you oh, put one, for $1, you get 2,000. So if you put $100 on that, you yeah. just ended up, damn, yeah, I That's might have saying. to go put $100 on Daniel Radcliffe, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what if it's only for a cameo? Because I'm pretty sure we're getting a that, Daniel Radcliffe. That's, but well, that's, I don't think he's the Wolverine. Right. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, you have to be pretty clear on it when you're betting. It's like, well, what is, are we talking about? Well, Deadpool or some MCU? It, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of fine print. Here. There's a lot of fine print. You got to see what what exactly it is. But I mean, I think that what we'll do mostly in this conversation. So let me see if there's any more to that particular article before we move on here. Now, it doesn't mean that Egerton or any of the others listed are, are here or ever will be in talks for the role, but it is certainly interesting insight into which actors the bookies think will emerge as top contenders to play Wolverine. Here's what Egerton potentially suiting up as Logan. Here's what Egerton potentially suiting up as Logan in the 2023 interview. He said, I'm not going to be the guy to play Wolverine. There's no signs pointing towards that being the thing. And I just don't know if I'm maybe I'm getting to the point where that's not what I want anymore. I don't know. I never say never. And I love those movies. I enjoy watching them over the past 10, 15 years. But I don't know. You know, it might be not be the thing that they, that's right for me. I think maybe I'm past the point where they feel it's the right thing for my career. So that's not that encouraging overall. Um, however... When you look at his relationship with Hugh Jackman, and I assume that he has then had conversations with Ryan Reynolds, who then had conversations with Sean Levy, who then had conversations with Kevin Feige, who he's already had conversations with, um, you you can see where your interview from 2023 can go, ah, I'm just kidding. You know what I mean? So I, 
I do think he's going to be the guy. I think he's going to be the guy. I think he's the right person for the role. I think he hits the. I think he's the right age range also, and I think you can get him for another ten years. And he's a brilliant actor. But I don't know, Winston. You see these these odds. Anyone that stands out that you think is definitely going to be the guy, or is it someone we know that's not on that list that we're not talking about here? I know someone that I feel like definitely won't be the guy, and that's Tom Hardy. I don't right. understand how he had odds that high, considering how old he is. And I would also probably throw out Henry Cavill, just in the sense of kind of the same thing you're pushing it too tall and, too tall and that's the other problem is that let's finally get what wolverine is supposed to be which is what makes him also so incredibly fascinating dude is a shorty he's not he is not like i love hugh jackman and i love what he brought to the character and that was something that i think we all kind of like blew past at the time just because of what he was bringing to the character but it this is something that like does add an, an element of badassery to him yeah. that he is five foot nothing but eviscerating people um that 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 just does a little something extra to the whole thing yeah well coy so. you know if that but going off of winston's i think correct logic there um taron egerton i think is 510 511 harry potter himself daniel radcliffe is like shorter he's like five seven five eight something like that so is he the guy? Is Edgerton 5'10"? Yeah, Something I was going like to say, that. Edgerton looks short, but also Google always lies. So I don't know. Like, I, I've worked with a lot of actors that uh, Google's like 5'9". I'm like, you're a 5'6 on a good day. Like, there's some Tom cruise uh, It says he's 5'9". It says 5'7". Uh, so yeah, he's, he's probably 5'7". But, but like, okay. I, I think, uh, personally, Radcliffe is a fun choice for a cameo. I don't see him as the, the MCU Wolverine. No disrespect to Radcliffe. I think he's one of the more interesting actors working but there's a, a maliciousness that i always talk about with certain characters that's like in their resting that i think he doesn't have hugh jackman mm. is a really interesting case because if you didn't see hugh jackman on stage you'd believe that he has that and he doesn't he seems to be so impossibly kind but i think we as a a, a culture have an association with radcliffe that'll make it harder to get through that barrier because we've known radcliffe growing up we've all kind of mm. grown up with daniel radcliffe so we didn't know Hugh Jackman was a sweetheart. We knew him. He was Wolverine. Yeah. And then he showed he was a sweetheart. And now we're like, we accept you as you six foot three hunky man that also happens to be able to be angry. But I think the problem with him or, or Cavill is they're really similar. Uh, and I think with this Wolverine, because he's already going to be compared to Hugh Jackman, you need a very different take. Like Wolverine's an interesting enough character that you can play him extremely differently and still be accurate to the character. But I think the last thing you do is cast someone so similar to Hugh Jackman as a six foot three, tall, dark, and handsome. Like you, you need more of a feral, little smells like peanuts on the bottom of a bar floor kind of guy. Yeah. And and honestly, like I think Taron, um, we haven't seen him play feral often. We haven't seen him like that. But I think we don't have as much association with who Taron Egerton is as a person as we do growing up with Radcliffe. So between the two, uh, I'd say Taron. Uh, and another thing that uh, Matthew Vaughn, who made X-Men First Class, he's been putting all of his weight behind his guy Taron. They did, you know, Kingsman yeah. and stuff. Yep. Um, and he, I did an interview with him for his newest movie, and he was saying, like, the only guy he's ever seen, and he's, he's the guy that, you know, greenlit a lot of stars. He put Daniel Craig in a movie first. He had Tom Hardy in a movie, yep. like, very early on. Like, he's very good at finding movie stars. So I think his his name has some weight. Even sure. if you don't like Matthew Vaughn, he's really brought a lot of stars to light. I think Matthew Vaughn's X-Men is the closest X-Men we've had. Yeah. I'd love if he mm. had some weight in deciding who, you know, this next round might be. Coy, the only thing I'll say with the, I agree with both of you guys. I think Taron Egerton is the guy, 5'9", plays short enough on screen. You put someone next to him who's 6'2", and that person will look 6'8", so on, on, on film. But let me say this about Daniel Radcliffe. Um, where you say he doesn't have that kind of ferocity and all that. You ever and and I'm this might come off as a joke, but it's also for real. You ever see him with the paparazzi? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Actually, even. No. I'm not even kidding. It's uh, pretty great. My, I got a lot of respect. For my you. man's got some anger. Um, yeah. And he's and maybe rightfully so anger at some some of the points of what happens, but he he can play he can play angry and he's he's got a lot more depth than because it's the same thing not to bring this back to Winston who is. A hundred percent, a million times over. Said, "Hey, I was wrong." But when we were talking about Pattinson for Batman um, and the Twilight thing, it's because a lot of people, and not just Winston, just saw Twilight. That's all they saw. And with when you're playing Harry Potter for that long, 
everybody sees Harry Potter. And it's got to be for him. He's yeah. done, I mean, I get where you're going with that. And he's done a lot, a lot. of work over the years. And so I, acting chops wise, I don't doubt that. But I understand what Koi's saying about what your, what your gear shift, like what, what your neutral is. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, nobody's also saying that he couldn't, have that in him and then get into character and so every time he's on set he just shuts it down and like puts that on however i i get what he's saying because he has also been such a public persona the fact that like it was trending the other day uh hashtag the day i met daniel mm -hmm. and it was uh, all these people <laughs> talking about i went to go see him in xyz play and i was out by the stage door and he like pulled me to the side and we'd like talk for a while and uh, one girl had mentioned that, or that you know, he noticed um, that she had had uh, self harming scars, and she he was like, "It's so brave of you to like wear short sleeves." Like I know how hard that, but like he is such an angel out in the public. And remembered that girl for ten years every time they saw each other Absolutely. and stuff like that. And that's more the association of neutral. I like how you put that, Winston. Like it's his neutral just seems so benevolent, and and it's not that he's not a great actor that can turn that on, and and. I think it's more about the association the audience has where Pattinson is the perfect example because he had to overcome the perception. I just don't know if Radcliffe wants to be that public with a role and overcome that perception. Like, I don't know if he wants to be in the spotlight to that level again, or if the audience would, I mean, he's got money. Right. He's got he's, what? 2% of dude, rich money. Rich people, like, rich people want more money. Richer. That's well, that's that is what <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. You're like oh, I got enough. It doesn't uh, stop. Dude, yes, dude. I'm sure. I'm not just, I'm sure he knows who actually is it, and he put the bet down on them, and he's doing just that's fine. True. But, that's uh, true. But also, if you want to cast him as an X Men, I actually think you should make him Nightcrawler. He'd I be think good that as Nightcrawler. He would actually be yeah. a fantastic yeah. Nightcrawler, especially if you follow through with the. Uh, not just him being religious, but like you saw in X Men '97, they actually had him. Um, as uh, a priest uh, or a pastor, I don't know, either a, mm -hmm. um, I think he could bring a lot to that as well. I think that that, that, that sincerity that's in there, that, that makes it that much easier for him to just transition into that because of how sincere Nightcrawler is. I think, to me, that's a better casting choice. It's a great him. call. I, I think it's a really good call. I'd love to see that also. But um, I think that all of us are on the same page. I think Taron Egerton definitely has that. Um, he's got to everything it it, it it is to play Wolverine. He really does. And he's he's a great actor. I think that it's a it's a good bet. You put in you put a hundred bucks on, on Taron Egerton, you win two hundred bucks if if you do that. And I don't even have any of these people for sponsors. I'm just saying. Um it is uh it's yeah, I, I would I would put I would put the money on him too unless it's like look, this is the one thing with Wolverine though that also and you look at Hugh Jackman, who nobody knew who Hugh Jackman was. Um yeah. that Hugh Jackman was a, oh who's that guy? I don't know who that is. Well, and then now everyone knew him as Wolverine. Wolverine is one of those characters that you could cast someone that we've never seen before, a la a um, you know what, what's what's this kid's name from uh, the new Super David Corn Sweat, where who knew who that was? But a I Superman. also think Tom Hardy was probably on a short list. Uh, I think Tom Hardy was probably very near being cast after Logan, and mm. then that is the only reason this this list has him. I honestly think it was. Uh, an undated like shortlist for wherever these people got this from because I I heard rumblings about Tom Hardy a decade ago and I yeah. feel like people just kept him on there. I don't think post Venom that's happening though. That's what I was yeah. thinking. I was like, once he did Venom, they, nah. they, there's no way that that was still a thing. Especially he's got a new he's got a new one coming out. But I I mean, as far Tom Hardy ten years ago is is the ideal like he's perfect. The absolutely he's just, perfect. Like, he is. That. He's perfect. I mean, he's walking around. He's Wolverine. He's Wolver he, you wouldn't even know the camera's on. He's Wolverine. Yeah, the bike right. is a Wolverine movie. If you look at it squinting, like it's, right. it's that's Tom Hardy. Yeah, you like no, that movie I, a little bit more than I did. I adore it, that movie. Yeah. Mm -mm. But I, 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 it's the age. It's not. It has nothing yeah. to do. Even, yeah. even if they were like, oh, okay, Venom's over. Fine, you can, you can go do it. It's purely the age. Yeah, we're not doing Old Man Logan anymore. We're doing. We're trying to find. <laughs> we're trying to find no. We're trying to find a new. Uh, that's bait. Yeah, we're trying to find a new uh, Wolverine here that's going to keep us into the X-Men world for a little bit. And if Taron Egerton is, I think, mid-30s or, or something like that, and uh, maybe young, early 30s, whatever he might be, he still, he's still got 15 years in the tank to play Wolverine if you wanted to. And so that's, 
I think that's the way you go. And I, th I agree with you guys also, as much as I do think that Daniel Radcliffe has the chops to do it, um, I think because of the association with Harry Potter, one way or another, and getting associated with another role like this maybe isn't the way to go. But who thought Heath Ledger would have been a good Joker is what I'm saying. You know, it's like if we were having this conversation, and let's all be honest, is Heath Ledger is, is like Coy's like, Favorite, yeah, he's, he's my favorite actor of so all time. I was Team Heath Ledger Joker, but I was the one so. because you because you loved him in general. But if we had this conversation and we were talking about it, you know, and back when he was getting cast, we would all be like, "That's an I don't know if I see it. I don't know if I see it." Uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker. Okay, I mean, look, the guy's a good actor, but can he pull off the maniacal? I don't know. And now he's like the gold standard of the Joker. So you you, you never know. You never know. Um, okay, we are. What we do know is that there's Superman stuff, tons of it, tons of Superman stuff, and we have to discuss it. So let's get into it, man. Let's talk about soups. This is from Comic Book Movie Set Photos Reveal Daily Planet Building. James Gunn shares new behind the scenes shot, and there's also a familiar face in that shot. But let's talk about this. When you look at the behind the scenes of Superman, you see those photos right there. Their shooting is currently underway in Cleveland, and the city streets have been transformed into Metropolis. There was a glimpse of one of the storefronts displaying the Daily Planet logo, and now you look at the leader building doubling the iconic newspaper's base of operations itself. Now you look at these photos, and the spotlight is on the main entrance in the lobby. We're not sure here if the Planet Signature Globe will be a sit atop the skyscraper, but that's something that would be added in post. Anyway, here are the photos photos themselves, and you can see it. And you can see the opening here of the Daily Planet of the actual opening of the building. Here's the opening of the building right there. And you can see that. I love what they're doing here. It's very old school. This is, you see these pictures. And guys, I mean, before I, I get into the rest of the stories here, yeah, I know, Coy, I think within the last, like, two or three years, you just saw the Donner movies. And yeah, yeah, I saw it. Uh, Same. Oh my, I, the last thing I did of my 30th birthday, like, I wanted to make it historic, because I'd already missed it that long, so I wanted to make it a moment, and it lived up to 30 years later. Like, it came out 10 years before I was born, so 40 years later, uh, it is one of the best superhero movies. It is it is amazing what that movie accomplishes. Um, I, it, it, they're... It's what I grew up on. I love, I love them so much. And I love the idea that when I look at this, I get hopeful that the feel, I don't want him to remake Donner's movies. I want him to make James Gunn's movie of what he sees in Superman. But I like taking that idea of let's make it look a little bit more retro. Let's make it look a little bit, let's make it look real. Let's not do this glossy, this is all CGI made through computers. Like doesn't, you know, like it's, like it doesn't feel like too polished. I want it to feel like, you know, the, the old cliche, um, it feels lived in. So, Coy, you see these photos, you check them out. You see what I'm saying with the Donner look? How do you feel about all these pictures? I, I totally agree. I don't think it's going to be, you know, another Donner rehashing. Certainly not a Donner sequel with a different actor and somehow having a child. But I do think it's going to be that feeling of superman that feels more akin to the donner version which is how i see superman i i'm glad this doesn't have uh you know a darkness to it i also personally am very happy to have metropolis feel like it's a character i'm a big fan of settings mattering i think that's a huge testament to the tim burton batman i think it's one of the reasons that you know superman and batman feel different is their gotham it's, it's a lot of nature nurture like where they come from represents who they are and i i personally one of the reasons I'm glad the DC EU is over is that that Daily Planet was uh, innocuous government building number seven in those movies. It had no uh, personality whatsoever. Metropolis didn't feel like a place. And then even as recently as The Flash, when the Batman uh, chase scene is happening, it's like cool and shiny. But Gotham had no distinction or flavor. And to be honest, I love, love Nolan. But the first film in the Nolan trilogy, Gotham felt like a place. And then in the second two, it felt more and more like he really, really loved watching Chicago. Like, it mm -hmm. felt like Chicago. It didn't feel like Gotham to me. And, and especially in the third film, like, that was a setting. Like, in No Man's Land, Gotham is an important setting. And I didn't feel like Bane was in a special place. I felt like he was in Chicago. So it was like he watched, uh, what's that Elliot Ness movie? Um, Untouchables. Yeah, he watched Untouchables a lot. And then Batman was in Gotham slash Elliot Ness's era of Chicago. 
So I, I, I want a, a flavor, even as much as I don't like what Shoemaker had to do because they made him make McDonald's commercials, at least his Gotham felt like a place. And I think even as recently as Birds of Prey, that and people are going to be so mad that I'm, I'm preferring Birds of Prey to some sauceless Gotham, but at least Birds of Prey felt like a place. So uh, I don't think Snyder invested in setting. I don't think Muschietti made Gotham feel special. I don't necessarily feel like, like the Flash lived anywhere. And those characters all represent their city. They're the heroes of their city. I want, and I feel like Gunn invests in location. Daily Planet already looks like it has at least more character than I've seen in the last 40 years. Winston, um, Coy a few weeks ago took shots at Martin Scorsese. Now he is going after Christopher Nolan. Um, <laughs> So I asked. I'm saying the one flaw. He had one thing that I didn't now, love, and that's look, the one. If you're going to give a flaw, you can go after Marion Cotillard's death. But if you're going to, but if yeah, you're going to, the only one that you can go. That's after the only one. You don't get Goth, I, the, I didn't look. I got your Gotham, Gotham points. Wasn't a yeah, I got your Gotham you, points. I got your Gotham points with it. Begins, it absolutely felt like a place. Yeah. I did not think it did. Dark. You, lo you lost me at the other ones. The other. Wait, 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 wait. You got, you got, you got the goddamn football stadium. You have the the full tunnel and everything that was going on. And then when you broke it down and it really became a martial law occupation, you want to tell me that there wasn't the character of Gotham? Are you out of your mind? Are there descriptors of Gotham besides like Neolithic brutalist architecture in a place that's lit like Chicago? Because I didn't feel like there was anything special. All right. Well, anyway, the point the point is this: Coy's a lunatic. So, would you? He's a lunatic. But I understand his point overall. What 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 the the genesis of this conversation is that I'm coming for Zemeckis next? Who's got? I'm sure you are. Uh, go up to the Polar Express. That's that's nice and dated. <laughs> but when you have uh, the, the, his point though is not is not lost. It's the fact that this looks like the Daily Planet so far. This looks like. You know, Metropolis. This looks like a, a, a feel, and it looks like James Gunn knows what he's going after. But you see these pictures, Winston. Uh, agree or disagree? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely it is definitely painting a very specific picture. Now, if based off of some of the stuff that we're seeing outside of the Daily Planet logo, if Coy really wants to play this game, I can make the same argument. Okay, so we're looking at literally a downtown. Do you want you want a cookie? So don't do this, Coy. You're you're wrong, and I'm telling you, you're wrong. You know I'm never this aggressive, but like, how dare you? Mm. How <laughs> dare you? Right. But this looks this looks a genuinely very cool. I think what I'm more obsessed with looking at the the photos on this article is actually the photos of the Daily Planet crew, uh, just because we had already seen everybody. We'd only heard about Beth Bennett in this that mustache spot on for steve like i i wish we could get him in the the shaggy kind of hair look that yeah. they that they used as a reference here i think that would be the the coup de gras but but th that mustache in particular i'm like yep he is going to nail that role a thousand percent and and to me yes the actual setting i believe is super incredibly important but it's equally as important uh, uh, about the people that inhabit said sure. city so for me part of the reason why gotham always had that uh character is because the people of gotham made it very clear you think about the are we going to blow each other up scene type situation uh like the 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 one part where they go uh, where it's like um the cops are starting to chase batman or whatever but mm -hmm. then the joker's coming out with the rocket launcher and everything like that and the rookie cop and how he's going to handle it and all like all of that to me adds to the character not just the location and so seeing stuff like this with the daily planet crew i can't wait to see what some of the regular citizens yeah. of metropolis are not the ones directly connected to to clark i i think that'll be like the last kind of step for me because otherwise yeah to a certain point a lot of these because they're based off of american cities anyway you kind of just throw it in and make sure you throw on the right logo and and will look good. So I, but but it looks it looks fantastic. It looks good. This looks what the comics look like. Well, Winston just mentioned, you know, when you're when you're blowing people up and blowing people up and speaking of blowing people up, let me talk about joy mode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> joy mode and rocket money. After you blow some people up with the joy mode, let me uh, let me tell you a little bit more about rocket money it'll help you so here you go here's both all right you know as well as i do even standing at that gas station you look over and you go oh sexual pills i'm gonna try one of those don't do it they are not good over there not healthy but joy mode is what is joy mode when you go to the gym and you take something to help you with your workout it's the same thing with joy mode it's a sexual enhancement performer man it's amazing and it works 
The issue is that that over-the-counter pill, it contains unregulated chemicals, it suggests unsafe doses, and it includes the risk of several other health problems. That is why we are partnered with our friends over at Joy Mode. I tried it, and man, oh man, it just makes you feel good. It's that extra pep. It's not necessarily a step, but you get what I'm talking about. Whether you're looking to spice up your intimate moments or increase your confidence in the bedroom, Joy Mode makes all natural and science-backed supplements dedicated to helping men perform better across their core functions. Their trademark product, the Sexual Performance Booster, it's every man's solution for increased blood flow, firmness, stamina, and performance. It comes in a palm-sized packet like your favorite electrolyte powder. Simply mix six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before sexual activity and watch the magic unfold. Literally, redefine your intimacy and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with the code big thing. Appropriate. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code big thing at usejoymode.com. Ingredients with integrity. Joy Mode. I've told you about Rocket Money, guys, and the reason why for Rocket Money was so important is that I I for a long time I used to do these things where I'd be on my phone and I'd start searching for these apps i'm like oh okay yeah i'll sign up oh for free yeah it's free for now but then it's going to be 20 30 dollars a month and you forgot that you're even paying it and i was like oh well this rocket money lets you know about what subscriptions that you have that you're not paying attention to it can cancel subscriptions for you it really is amazing and it just it just cuts so much time out of my schedule and i i, I love it because you don't even know how much you're paying in subscriptions. And you're probably paying way more than you think because over 74% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. And I definitely did that. I can tell you that right now. Like there was a couple, of, I'm telling you some of these apps, I tried some of these apps and I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot all about it. You think you spend around 62 per month on subscriptions, something like that, but it's close to about 300. <laughs> it goes about 300 a month because Rocket Money is also, it's a personal finance app and it finds, it cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors all of your spending and it helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. Because I got full control over my subscriptions. I have a clear view of my expenses. It helped tremendously on this move. Um, and you don't want to waste money. So it's got over 5 million users. And they've saved, they saved, from what they said, the average people, I think overall, everyone that's using it, 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Wow. It's, yeah, it saves about $740 a year. It's great. So stop wasting money on things that you don't use. You just cancel your unwanted subscriptions. You go to rocketmoney.com slash thing. Rocketmoney.com slash thing. Very easy. Rocketmoney.com. All right. Thank you to our friends over at Rocket Money and, of course, Joy Mode. I get everyone excited when I tell you about Joy Mode. And, and I had someone last week going, listen. No, this was the best. By the way, I didn't tell you guys this on the stream. A, a guy told me that he got, um, he put it in a, a, a super chat to tell me this. He used Joy Mode. He was trying with his wife for months for with kids. They used Joy Mode, first shot, got pregnant on Joy Mode. God. Yeah. So yeah, Joy Mode is amazing. And then you have Rocket Money to keep your finances in check, cancel those unwanted subscriptions. I always put the links in the description. So go and check it out. Thank you guys for joining us with uh, our sponsors because when you do that, it helps out the show more than you can imagine. Um, sticking with Superman, newly revealed photos. Newly revealed photos from the set of Superman have offered a first look at the Daily Planet's iconic globe, but is Clark Kent and Lois Lane's workplace coming under attack? Work to transform Cleveland into Metropolis is ongoing, and while we've caught sight of the DCU's Daily Planet, the newspaper's iconic globe, has now arrived on Superman's set. You can see this here. The globe is hanging above the entrance to the planet's headquarters. Clark will work there in the movie, yada, yada, yada. So here's the photo itself, um, and it looks like maybe there's like some debris and some kind of battle. The thing fell down, or maybe they're lifting it back up. Who knows what the hell's happening here? It looks like, is there trouble at the Daily Planet? I'm sure there was some kind of thing that went down and then right behind that you also get i want to show this photo here of um chris pratt watching with uh with james gunn in the background there he was on is that who that was yeah chris pratt he's on the he's on the he's behind you look at that scene this james gunn's looking at the monitor this dude next mm -hmm. to him and then behind that dude is chris pratt so well let, let me let's start with the chris pratt side of it, it it's they're buddies they've worked on a, a bunch of movies together they've made a lot of money together and maybe it, is it possible that James Gunn goes, hey, Chris, you want to come on set and go check out what I'm doing on Superman? Oh, dude, I'd love to. I'm around. I'd love to. I, that'd be great. I'm going to come by and, and check it out. That's cool. Very possible that that's what happened. 
other mm. side of it, hey, we've been talking about some stuff, and you know, you're probably going to pop in one of these movies, and we get, we're we're having lunch, and we're talking about potential business deals, and you're in town, you want to come by the set? Yeah, let's do it. And you know, it's so either, there's five billion different options of of what can happen, but I think that if you're James Gunn and you can put Chris Pratt in one of your movies, and you could probably get him to do it, maybe not at his his extreme rate, but you still get him enough. Um, and he can help out your, your your movie and bring some star power to it. Sure. Do you give him something like a booster gold? I don't think so. I think you. I think it's too on the nose. I think you give him something completely different, something away from Star Lord, something that you know you you wouldn't see him doing at all, and you just turn it on there on its head. But I like I'd, I'd like to see him in the DCU. Why not? Uh, Winston, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Chris Pratt being in it. I think we agreed though that it Booster Gold, you, you, that's that's an opportunity for somebody else to really kind of have that spotlight. It would be too much like Star Lord, where we don't want to just pigeonhole him into the same thing. Uh, he's famous enough. I think give him give him genuinely. A, a, you can give him an important character, but not a character that like is center stage. So if you want to like, I'm just like trying to think of random people he could play. Uh, going on down the line here unless you're trying to wedge him are you trying to wedge him into this movie nah they're not gonna put him in this movie no way then then once you kind of get maybe like give it give it some time but once you get into some more of the cosmic stuff if you want to make him like i don't know why koi i can't shake him uh outside of being like uh metron you know like what's funny some, is I, I think he would have been a good Steve Lombardi if they hadn't cast him. He already. also would have been a good like, Steve. He would have like been a good Steve. Him with the mustache, like, and that would be such a great like inversion where we could be like, ah, oh, what a fun way to include Chris, but not have yeah. him like you know. Yeah. But I, I don't think he's in Superman. I think he was visiting his friend, and I think I he think might so. be in talks with DC, and maybe that was part of the conversation. But I I would I think it's safe that he's already Garfield, Mario, and Star Lord for now. I think yeah. I think he's tucked in. Can you Arnold Terminator him? Can you put him as a bad guy? Can you? Can I would you... love to see him get to flex actual acting because I feel mm-hmm. like he's been playing. You know, it, it is acting doing the. I know what you does, mean, though. Off, off but, type, off type. Yeah, the kind of the opposite of what I was saying about Radcliffe. I'd yeah. love to see Radcliffe get to be per- perceived as something else. I'd love to see Chris get to be perceived as something else. Yeah, me too. I'd love to see Chris Pratt play a villain, and like, you know, it's one of those things. Like, well, why would you? And and, and I would say, and have him not see if he can do a role without any jokes. See, He'd be a good Metallo, man. It'd be cool yeah, to see but, him be like stoic and intense and like, you know, become right. like a, a, a shell of Kryptonian rage and metal. I'd love to see you know, it, but but ooh. if you're but, but if you're sitting in the if you're sitting in the meeting though with all those studio executives and you say what I just did about like Chris Pratt's not gonna tell jokes, they're gonna go, We're gonna hire Chris Pratt to not tell jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like, like that. that's like his that's like his 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 number one thing. Why wouldn't you have him tell jokes? And you know, that's probably not unfair to ask, but I just would like to see him go. Like that, that's my point is that you don't need him to. You have so many I, other people that can do it. You just don't need him to. If you're gonna if you're gonna use Chris Pratt and you want to put him in a role that's like big enough, but like you don't put him at the forefront again, I think you wait until you start talking about the new gods. But I could see him as Mister Miracle. Actually, I don't know enough about it. I like Mister Miracle. I always saw like more of a depressed. Um, I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal's my Mister Miracle because mm. he's so dark. Mm. But uh, but I, I can. Or even what's his name um, from uh, Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti was who I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, exactly. But like, or uh, Jake Johnson. Like, I, I see someone that you're like worried about their. Uh, I get. I guess I get that. It's just that you know, like, I, Chris Pratt could do that too, in the sense that it's always something that's like kind of bubbling under the surface. Because Mister Miracle, a lot of times, does not present that way. It's that mm. once the cameras are off him, as far as being in front of a bunch of people. When he retreats by himself, that depression comes out. But it's that whole check on your 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 happiest your, your, friend your situation. Friends, yeah, it that's what that would read in that regard. So it would be very Chris Pratt forward, and then the acting back would be like a. Whew. But like uh, I originally was going to say Orion, but that's completely wrong. If Alan Richardson doesn't end up being <laughs> Batman like he wants to, he would be a fantastic Orion. That's essentially that's essentially Reacher in space with superpowers yeah. so <laughs> well it'd be a lot there's, there's there's a lot here then what about as koi as far as the daily planet under attack i mean that that makes sense right i mean it feels all but inevitable right yeah. if you're going to build up a, a city and have an important landmark there's a reason that most avengers th- things happen in new york like you want to yeah. have the iconography as part of the battle 
And I think, uh, you know, the Daily Planet having its its planet back. It's been a while since we've had the spinning Daily Planet cinematically, like in movies. They do it in the shows, but I, I'm excited to see that probably get hit. Like, you want to use the iconography. So I think it's it's the right choice to make Metropolis feel like a character and also to use the imagery of the comic book strongly. Um, a lot's going on in the world of DC. You've got Superman. Yeah, we just mentioned Batman, all these different people. And we know that the Green Lantern is coming pretty soon we know there's a tv show and john ham recently said that he turned green lantern down and all these people had a chance to use the rings well you have a chance to use the rings and what rings am i talking about i'm talking about gentle bands that's right i've been talking about gentle bands all week and i want to tell you about them they're phenomenal i love the ring that i got from them and let me tell you a little bit more about them here you go all right guys before i move on i want to tell you guys about gentle bands check that out you see that ring right there that is gentle bands and so this company reached out to me a little while ago and they said, hey, we think that you and your audience would be perfect for us. I said, yeah, why do you think that? And then I started to take a look. And so what's so special about them is it's what Gentle Bands does. They kind of reimagine the, the genre of science fiction and fantasy. And, and they also, they really, really pay attention to detail. And this particular ring, it's made, it's tungsten and opal. And you can see a little bit of it right here. And it has like that balance of the dark side and the light. It reminds me of like Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. So tungsten is very dense, sturdy, and opal is like the highlight. It represents personality, style, all that stuff. And their package, the stuff that it comes with is really great. They also offer engraving services at the moment. That's pretty great. They draw inspiration from classic science fiction films and games, and their team has developed this galactic collection, and it captures the essence of the enchanting universe and the eternal battles between dark and light. So once again, when you're taking a look, look at this website in general, and just some of the things that they have there. And as I show you a few of the pictures here, I thought those were pretty interesting on how they actually kind of crafted this whole thing. Now, if you, want to go and get one of them you go to gentlebands.com and you can use my code kh channel and you'll get 25 percent off it's pretty amazing you get 25 percent off but you got to use that code kh channel it around i really love it and it's got it yeah it, it just i'm not gonna lie to you it does I, I i would i have said my precious a couple times but here it is check it out gentle bands links in the description thanks guys all right thank you to our friends over at gentle band make sure that you Go to the link in the description. Check it out. It is a wonderful, wonderful ring, and I'm uh, and I'm glad that I got in partner with them. Okay, so here's something that happened during the actual show as we were prepping the Penguin trailer. It dropped. I, I don't want to do this because every time I do it, people are like, "Yeah, you all you do is take shots on Star Wars now." But remember when you remember when they pitched the book of Boba Fett as a the, the Godfather of Star Wars things. I'm like, what are we, what? When you say, if someone says this is going to be like the Sopranos of, of Batman, I'm like, it sure looks like it. Sure looks like it. I mean, that's like the music, the gritty tone, the idea that it's not just him. They're not just, they're focusing on the Falcons and, and, the, and the, the kids and the struggle for power. And like Winston said, sure, it's like, oh, we're doing a Penguin series. Do we care if Batman's not in it? I certainly do. And they have the balls to focus on the villains. Focus on the villains. It's and, and there's nothing that says that Batman maybe doesn't show up. I, I, if I had to guess, I would say you're not going to get a full on Pattinson necessarily. You might get a like kind of Luke Skywalker esque in the second season of Mandalorian at sure. some point. Sure. Well, but we, I, I think it's confirmed think, already. I think it's confirmed that he's been on set. I, that he's been on set. Okay. I but think I, so. but I but what's interesting is I would put money on. You maybe get Bruce, but you don't get Batman. And uh, honestly, I think what you're saying about Bruce Wayne would be better for this show and not have Batman in it, because I think it enhances Gotham if Bruce Wayne is a figure that's not, like, involved. He's a playboy. He's not doing a lot to juxtapose the crime that's happening. And then, like, Batman is obviously what he's doing to solve the thing. But I love when mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne is blamed for just being a playboy. And it'd be cool to see all this crime and rampant like dirt and grit and then him living this posh extravagant life to make it look like Bruce Wayne's this pompous prick. I honestly think this show shouldn't have Batman. If it does like, you know, him in the shadows, but I don't want to see the fight here. I think it'd be really cool if the show's called Penguin, build out Gotham, build out crime, because then by the time you get back to Batman, it's had that time of like, Batman, Gotham's flooded. 
let the town get worse, let Gotham get worse, and let Batman have more to do in Batman 2. Play yeah. the long game and trust your audience. Because this looks like, you kept saying The Sopranos, but I, I love just the idea of crime <sighs> being a character that Batman is, is fighting this unwinnable war. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean... I, You're good, Winston. I was just going to say, if, if, you, if you must show Batman with this, um, I think the way you do it is maybe early on... In one of the earlier episodes, you have maybe a fight that Batman wins and, and kind of messes stuff up as far as just like arcs on the season. And then once you get near the end, if you if you need to show him again, you have Penguin win that fight. And then that leads us into Batman 2 of like now, OK, what's the aftermath of, of Cobblepot getting the better of him? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the season, why not? I think we're going to I think we're going to get Batman mentions. I think that. I feel like, and I don't know why if I'm making this stuff up, but I feel like that there was already like rumors or reports that they're not going to use Batman, that they're going to use Bruce Wayne. I feel like those, I feel like those were reports that's that were correct. happening. That's the correct move. Like I was just saying, if you no, need I know, to but I feel Batman, like, but yeah. I just feel like that was a, I feel like that was a report. I don't know if that's true or not, but either way, um, I even think that if you use Bruce Wayne, it's going to be like you know him on the television as they're sitting around in one of their gangster meetings or. Then there's then there's mention of so and so was at the warehouse and the bat was there or something along those lines. We don't need to see him. It's because I think Coy's right. You know, you you set it up to where okay, we know that he lives here because people are going to be asking that question. Remember that when the Marvel the MCU just got started and they had the single movies and everybody in every movie asked, well, where are the rest of the Avengers? Where are them? We have, you get all this stuff happening and. Iron Man's not showing up. And Thor's not showing up. They're all, what's happening with them? It's the same thing. If there's that much crime around, people are going to say, where's Batman? Where is he? Because we know he exists. We know that he put him, you know, that he's, he already did all this stuff. So, and it's a, it, it's year two at this point. So why not, or year three, I guess, at this point. So why not show, um, no, or tell, tell. This is an okay circumstance of tell, don't show. The other thing you could do, which would be interesting, because this drops when? September. September. And maybe they have it in their back pocket in the same way that we had uh, since they couldn't get the next uh, Spider-Verse film mm -hmm. done this year like they wanted to. They put out that short film. If you put out a short that get explained that shows us why Batman would maybe not be as much of a key player right now, that would be kind of a cool like teaser not only to tee you up for the penguin but also to build lore out a little bit on the batman but you would have to have already done that obviously they're not yeah, gonna you know, know think right. of that right now but that that would be the only way i could see that if you wanted to go a purely artistic route and not feel like you're you're you know um uh you know essentially just plot explaining it uh right. you know in the in a scene right I, i'm also entertained by you know people complaining we haven't had the batman two. you know it's it's five years between them we got a full-on penguin show in between, like what six hours of entertainment instead of two. I'm so glad we get Batman, and then years later Penguin, and then years later Batman Two, because we get to live in this Gotham, and I'm so appreciative that we get a Batman that feels like the detective, the gritty, the noir. Yep. Because the Batman that's going to fit in the world of Superman and the world of the Justice League is likely going to be a lot more comic-y. It's going to be a lot like I don't ever want to see Superman in the world of Penguin. I don't want there to be you lose so much suspension of disbelief if right. there's grounded gritty crime and there's a guy with laser eyes that can stop all of it in two seconds right. if, if you've got a guy that can like swirl around and solve all this then what are the stakes i want matt reeves batman i'm so glad it's separate and i want that to carry on for years to come as a separate story because i think the audiences can understand that there are multiple batman now yeah i think as long as you make it i mean you the way that you're explaining it and the way you're setting it up and you're setting up the new batman and in whatever movie it is or whatever show it is and and i think that there's there's more stories that we're just not gonna be able to get to today because one of those things we kept talking about like peacemaker right and we know that it's wow. in gun's wife jennifer holland right and so she is um she pretty much confirmed that she's going to be in the dcu and that peacemaker i guess is in the dcu and they're going to have to explain that and we're going to figure out how that is we discussed that um, but there are certain characters that are going to make their way over. They're going to connect. And then there's going to be other things like this and other properties that you're going to go not connected. And I get it. And they're going to explain it. And it's not going to be confusing. That's, that's I think, what Gunn is going to do very well. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing we didn't really get a chance to talk about here today is the boys. Did you guys watch episode four? I, I got okay. so tired of that. That and, dude, Kendrick Lamar literally owned 
the internet that I I I, I didn't even see people okay. talking about the boys because right. of that. Right. So yeah, so episode the, four. The fourth episode is my favorite of the okay. season by a like a large by a large. Budget. It's exceptional. When well, you get to it. last night last night I was playing, my my goal was to sit down and watch episode one. Because I've just been I've just been so consumed with the move and and trying to shoot shows and stuff that I was going to do that last night, but I still I'm I'm watching stuff from from this projector that my that my uh, my brother got me actually, um, and I sat down last night to watch it and it was like le- next thing I would have put two shows up it was midnight and I'm like I got to wake up and do these other shows I'm gonna I'll have to do four episodes and then by the time we get to next week I'll have you know the fifth reaction hopefully done, so we'll watch see. Watch one a day. I'm gonna so I'm now, I'm gonna try to knock out two. I'm gonna try to knock yeah. out two because speaking of, because it's funny because Jake speaking of Jake Gyllenhaal, my wife's watching Presumed Innocent right now. Oh, I can't wait to start that. And she loves it, so she's been watching. Speaking of Penguin, he's got that show on Apple Plus too. He's got Sugar, which I want to watch. Oh yeah, it's another Apple Apple. This is why I say it, Apple is dude, quietly the best streamer, man. I say every time that I am trying to manifest that um, that Disney is going to sell Star Wars to Apple. I'm, Can you? Imagine? I would. Oh my God! I would love it. I would love it. It would be the best thing for Star Wars. Just how do you? Hmm. You, how do not, you? They're never going to just sell. Do you just sell the movie rights? Because you sell what Lucasfilm. Do you, do with all, you sell huh? Lucasfilm. But I'm saying, like all of the all of the stuff you've established at the at the parks and everything. How do you? There's no way that you can do it. There's no, there's no way you can do it. There's just, you, you, I'm, I'm dreaming. There's no world where you can do it. You have, you'd have but to. But I believe, I believe in dreams. Chris. I know you'd have to, you'd have to sell it. You have to sell it, and then also, you know, do something with, uh, with Apple to, to then either, either you either shut down the stuff at, at Disney or you coexist with it. It's the answer is it's never going to happen. That's the answer. You gotta, you gotta co, you gotta co. I think you gotta do. The Universal Parks has the Disney. That they have yeah. comic. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say that what Universal Parks has like Harry Potter. They can that's, coexist. Well, Universal that's Parks Brothers. on the other side of the Mississippi has Marvel Comics. They just can't be MCU. Yeah, I know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's so I don't know. I don't know. It, it'll never happen. Anyway, so thank you guys for joining us here today on the show, and I, I do have to thank. Winston and Coy for waking up so early to do this show. And Ooh. let me start People in with the comments are going to be like, Oh, 7 a.m. is not early. Oh, I've got fireworks. I know. Uh, that's why I turned, that's why I got it away from you and went to Winston. So Winston, can you plug your <laughs> stuff first before we get uh Coy celebrating? That's what's up. You can find me on all the platforms at the swaggy blurred. Uh, just crossed uh, the 3000 oh, marker. Nice. Thank you so much over on YouTube about to hit 12 K of Instagram, bro. That reel is still, it's got like blowing f- up 15 million views or something, right? It's insane. It's hilarious. It's, it is absolutely insane, but definitely come and find me on all the platforms, but especially YouTube. Uh, I've been doing my reviews and stuff like that. I do apologize that I'm a little behind on those just because reviews take a little longer to edit. But I've also started uh, a new show on the channel called The Blurred Breakdown. Uh, I am going through all of the news throughout pop culture, uh, internet, all that good stuff. And I just recently did one talking about Justin Timberlake's arrest. Poor guy. And how black people have no chill. Yeah. <laughs> so come check it out. Uh, Coy? <laughs> uh, you find me on YouTube and Instagram as well. Uh, I do a weekly comic book show, breaking down all of that week's comics and reviewing all of the week's comics prior. That's going to drop uh, probably the day this airs because I'm a little behind too. Um, it's been a crazy week, and then also I'm covering the Acolyte, and I'll be covering the Bear next week, probably in two parts because it's dropping all at once. So I head on over to my t- YouTube. Yeah, it's there's so much. There's a lot, and I right and I go on vacation. That's the problem that pisses me off. I gotta work on vacation. Yo, know, again, cry me a river. So. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us here today on the show. As always, if you're brand new to the show, hit that subscribe button. On this channel, we have tons of stuff happening. Monday through Friday, we have our Big Thing show. I moved UAP Tuesdays over to the Down to Earth with Christian Harloff channel. That's on there, obviously, on Tuesdays. We have the Out of the Theater reaction. I'm going to do an Out of the Theater reaction today for Horizon. Um, We do trailer reactions. We do uh, reviews and all that. And we'll be doing more TV stuff. I'm doing like House of the Dragon last week. I was able to do, you know, my immediate reaction. I didn't do my spoiler review for it, but I will do my spoiler review on Monday for episode two. So tons of stuff. So hit that button. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Thank you to Winston. Thank you to Koi. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye-bye.